entitled this one, A Journey with uh, Jesus, because, you know, we can pattern our journey with His journey, not just for uh, 40 days of uh, Lenten season, but even the whole life of Jesus and our own whole life also. We can always pattern it. So, journey is kind of if you are here, if you see me, uh, you attend Mass all the time with me. That's one of the common words that I always um, mentioning the word journey. I don't know why, but I like the word journey because I look at life as, you know, a journey with not just with each other, but with um, Jesus. So let us begin this um, recollection with uh, prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So before that prayers, let us watch this uh, video, um, remembering or reminding ourselves the passion of Christ. group A, we say, Lord Jesus Christ, be present here with us today in this Lenten journey. Let me be honest with you and myself. Let me see everything that is wrong with my soul and my heart and admit my shortcomings in sins. For group B, Lord, show me what I should change in my life and please fill my heart with patience and gratitude and peace. Please teach me to accept others and show my love to them. Lord, please guide me to the path which leads closer to you. The only thing I pray is to reconcile with you and live in the light of your grace. Heavenly Father, please give me the strength to keep my promises and to get closer to you through my Lent prayers and good works altogether. So we pray to you to give us eyes that see the best in people, a heart that forgives the worst, a mind that forgets the bad, and a soul that never loses in, f in you. Grant that weary and tired as we are, we may begin this recollection in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A journey with Jesus. Before we proceed, I want to show this uh, short video also. How, let us say, the, the summary of the sacrifice of Jesus. So let us watch this um, short video regarding the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Jesus suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. So that's the shortest video that I can show you, the summary of why Jesus died on the cross. A very simple presentation, but it would remind us the importance of the, the cross where Jesus is uh, hanging. Sometimes, you know, this is the thing that when we use to see things, when we use to do things, sometimes we forget the, the value of those things. For example, this cross crucified uh, Jesus. If every day we come into this church, just look at this image of Jesus, sometimes we are get to use it. Okay, this is the man who died on the cross. This is the man who offered himself. Oh, that's Jesus. But when we interrupt that, you know, um, regular things that we are doing, when we stop doing the, the things that we, we do every day and step back and reflect and remind ourselves again, what is this man doing on the cross? What is this man, um, why he did these things 
for all of us. And again, we will be refueled, we will be reminded again the importance and value of the death of Jesus on the cross. Because that's one of his goal in this life, you know, to save us. And by saving us, he needs to be on that cross. He needs to be uh, killed so that those people, even those who are mocking him um, under the cross, he was able uh, to save or he's going. We're able to save all of us. The point here is to setting our goal in this life. You know, a journey has always an end. A journey has always a goal to reach somewhere, a destination. That is why this question for all of us is, what's, what is our goal in this life? And we know it. Sometimes we forget. That's why we need time to reflect and to rethink to recollect, to recollect again those things that we have, but sometimes we forget. So today, we are trying to, to set that goal or to remind ourselves, what is really the goal of my life? What is really the goal of our life in this world? So the goal of discipleship or following Jesus is to be like Jesus himself, to think as he thought, to feel as he felt, to act as he acted, and desire what he desired. If you remember one time here, I said in my homily, I am not Jesus. I can never be Jesus. But we can always be like Jesus. We can imitate the things that he did in this world. That is why He is there to inspire us, to follow Him, to do the things that He did. We don't need to be Jesus Himself, but we are encouraged to be like Him. We are not worthy to become Jesus Himself. Well, we have Jesus in us every time we receive the sacrament of a Eucharist. Literally, we have Jesus inside of us but the thing is we are always encouraged to be like him to imitate him that's why we have that you know i don't know if you encounter that a small book a packet book titled the uh, imitation of christ because you know these are the guidelines how to set our day and how to to do things in accordance to the way of Christ, imitating Him, following Him, you know, to see other people through the eyes, through the lens of Jesus. We want to put our eyes, how, what Jesus see from each other. Because if we are just using our own eyes, this eyes is very, uh, you know, it can deceive us most of the time. What we can see sometimes from one another is the negative things, the bad things, the things that we don't like. And we are blinded sometimes with these things. So we need to see things through the lens of the eyes of Jesus. To talk, to imitate Him, also to try to imitate the way He speaks. A few times, in the Bible that he get angry. But it tells us that he is also a 100% human being. He got that, you know, emotion. He got that also that anger. But not all anger that could lead us to sin because this is just an expression of our emotion. But most of the time, because of that anger, it leads us to sin. Because of that anger, we can say, not a good word or say bad words or even we can curse sometimes. To, that's why to imitate, to think that how really Jesus talked to us if he is here with us. If I am going to uh, be with Jesus or to be like Jesus, how can I talk like him? I don't think he will say curse words. I don't think he will curse someone. 
I don't think he will do gossiping. That's, that's how we should imitate Jesus. That's how we, we, we try to become like Jesus. Just focusing on this, you know, on this face, not really my face, but you know, we have so much senses in our part of our head. How to see, how to hear, how to speak, how to hear. Remember that ear and heart? We are not just listening with our ear, but put H and T to that word of ear so that we can listen with heart. And I think that's the way Jesus listened for all of us, to all of us, even during his time. Remember that adulterous woman that people, Sadducees, Pharisees were bringing uh, this woman in front of Jesus? How he listened to them. He listened that, well, according to Moses, this woman should be stoned to death. And Jesus did not, uh, you know, contradict that law. It's there. But he said, well, do it. Those who think who has no sin, let him or her throw the stone first. He listened to them, but he listened also to this woman, not just with his ear, but with love. These are just the basic example that we can do how to be like Jesus, how to set our life, the goal that we can reach later on, heaven, the goal that we can enter God's kingdom, things that we need to do in this world. That is why, as I said, we are trying to be, you know, good and holy. This is not a becoming a uh, Pharisees. This should be our goal. We need to be a good person, a holy person. I cannot forget that words of our um, teacher, psycho-spiritual teacher, that at the end of the day, please always think that we need to be holy, that we need to be a good person. The goal of our life is to save by Jesus. He came to this world so that he can save the humanity. Now let us cooperate with that saving act of Jesus to allow ourselves to be saved. You know that last December, I said that we need to extend our hands to Jesus as he extend his hands on the cross because it's useless if Jesus keep extending his hands and we keep closing our hands because we don't want to be saved. We need to cooperate with this saving uh, action of God. And of course, I keep saying that we hopefully, we can enter God's kingdom. We can also able to say what St. Paul in his second letter telling Timothy, that I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Isn't it that wonderful that at the end of our journey, we can say, well, Lord, I have fought a good fight. Not fighting my wife, not fighting my husband, but fight in this journey. I tried to be your faithful servant. I have finished the race. I did not give up in this journey. And I kept the faith. Because without that, we can never, you know, it's hard for us to reach our goal, to reach the kingdom of God. So how can we be sure that we are doing the things that could help us to enter in God's um, how can be sure that we are following really the footsteps of Jesus? Aside from Him that we are following, because it is a journey, it is a, you know, a life journey, so we need some signs. We need something that we need to follow. We need something to see where I am going. By reaching that goal, you know, even driving, 
We need those signs, okay, at the end of this corner. We need to turn left or to turn right. So we need signs. But that signs is not our destination. It is just a help for us to reach our goal, our end of this journey. That's why even reading the signs sometimes, we should be careful. Because even those signs, there are people putting the signs just to, you know, not to guide a person, but to make that person lost his way. And some of them, sadly to say, these are people that are close to us. These are people who are our friends. That's why if you have that faithful and loyal friends, please keep that. Because not everyone has that kind of friends. So that's why we need the sense of direction. We need that, that signs. If we have that five senses, and uh, the sixth one is our uh, senses fidei, the sense of faith, we need also an extra sense, sense of direction. Before reaching our goal, we need these things. By the way, what is the best signs, the best sign that we can have in this life? Is it a road sign? <laughs> yeah, I, I heard it. Sign of the cross. That's the perfect and best sign that we can have in this life. Sign of the cross. Just a simple cross and it could lead us into the right direction. It could lead us in a proper way reaching our goal. Without these signs and direction, it's easy for us to be lost and even it's easy for us to be deceived. Just for this example, I find this picture really something. What do you see? It seems that the person looking to that lake but be careful with your eyes there is no lake in this photo even me I was deceived but it's just a tree fell down and I trying to recreate a picture out of this tree don't worry even me I was fooled by this one so I'm trying to use this one it's kind of a concrete example that even as small small things it's easy for us to be deceived by our senses sometimes that's why adding that five senses that we have we need the sign the, the sense of faith and the sense of direction so questions are in this journey what are the things that we need to bring what are the things that you know because we need to carry something. We, 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 we can't um, go somewhere without bringing anything. We need something in our backpack. We need something to carry along the way. Even, for example, going for hiking. We need some water. We need some food. Even in going for swimming or picnic, we need to bring something for us, not just our car. That's why in this journey, there are things that we need to bring, but not everything we can bring because it makes our, you know, journey so hard also. If we carrying so much load in our back, it's not also a good thing. So we need to select things that we need to do. So keep asking as I... Um, how do you call this one? Reflect this, this title of a journey uh, with Jesus. I was able to think of this phrase. Life is a journey and not a destination. But everlasting life is a destination where our journey ends. But it's not only that there is other or another um, destination that we don't like to be which is hell it's an everlasting destination also 
That's why we need to be careful in this journey of this life. So as I mentioned earlier, how? What are the things that we need to, to bring in this journey? I wanted to present to you this, you know, um, graph where we need to know three person in this life. We need to, to learn how to practice this and put into practice these uh, three pillars of land. And how can we make it sure by using the ash in our life to find also life in this journey? As I said, this is not just about me. I'm just here trying to journey with you also, trying to offer these things. Actually, it's simple things. You can even reflect um, deeper than my reflection, but I am just here to, to help each other. You listening to me also helping me in this journey. That's why let us try to see these things as we do our um, reflection today. And later on, you can see these uh, slides again and again. So knowing myself, others, and himself, as I mentioned to you earlier. So we'll focus on this um, graph, asking the questions, who am I, who are they, and who is Jesus? We thought that we know so much things about ourselves. We thought that we know so much things about our friends, our neighbor, and we thought that we know so much things about Jesus. But sometimes this uh, knowledge that we have are so shallow and we don't even know the real us, the real um, friends or neighbors. And sometimes we misunderstood and we don't really know Jesus. But I don't think with you. I know you know him. But we want to have a deeper knowledge about Jesus. To ask this question is also part of our journey, you know. If you're going with a tour of someone, you need to ask, okay, am I ready? Am I capable of doing these things? Who are my companions? Who are my guides? Who are there to help me if I need help? Something like that. We, we need something to, uh, we need to ask ourselves before, you know, participating in a journey. These questions are more on, you know, personal questions, inquiring and discovering who are myself or what are the things that I have that you have or our neighbors and what are the things that we need to know more about Jesus. So the question is, who am I? I don't know if you asked yourself before, but sometimes, you know, time to time, I, I ask this question, who really I am? And I can say, I'm Father Ruben. But there are things that we need to, to know e deep inside of myself, of ourselves, that sometimes we don't know. And let, us me, le let me present this, uh, you know, the Juhari window for those who took psychology. This is, I think you encounter this, um, let us say, paradigm in a psychology. Johari are the combination of the names of these two American psychologists named Joseph Loft and Harry Ingham. So they combined their name because they were able to create this, this um, self-awareness and pers personal development uh, like theory or model. By using this one, we can learn that there are things in us that we don't know. How we know? Well, we don't know because if we know, so we know ourselves. But anyway, they presented four windows in this, um, in this model. The first win window, they, they called it an open window. It is about knowing or things that known by both you and others. So there are things that I know about myself 
and you know about me. So these are open window. The second one is the blind spot. There are things that are known to you and known by others. There are things that you know about me which I don't know. That's possible. Especially, if, for example, if you're listening to me, what are the, the, the things that I do as an expression which I am not aware? So these are the simple things that you know about me, but I don't know. Sometimes in a worst case, you know something about me which I don't know that other people thought that, oh, you did this, Father. Which one? I don't know that one. You know, it's a um, kind of gossip or something that one. In our life, we experience these things. We are just surprised. What? I did not say that word. I did not do that thing. But they know. That's how other people know. But anyway, they are trying to introduce that there are realities in our life that we don't know, but our friends know. Other people knows about it. That's why, the, you know that phrase, tell me your friends, uh, who are your friends, and I will tell you who you are. Because, you know, knowing other people, sometimes it gives us more details about a person. The third one is hidden, the hidden window, which is known to you, but not by others. So it's our secret, personal secret. There are things that it's just for us that you don't know. This is my things that I know, but I'm not showing it to you. That there are things that this is my attitude if I am by myself, but I don't show it if I am in front of people. So these are the third window. These are hidden uh, things inside of us. And the fourth one is the unknown. Unknown both by you and others. Is that really possible? Well, with our knowledge and senses are so limited, I believe there are things that you don't know about me and myself I don't know. But of all these four windows, someone knows very well God himself that is why we cannot hide from him we cannot hide something inside of us that God doesn't know so although this is just applicable for us but there is someone behind it that he knows everything about us and uh, you know about our inner selves 